Hey guys, it's Ethan again. I got some really cool news to uh, share with you. I got the forge lid, so we'll be making hammers pretty soon. Uh, I just went on a road trip for the last couple of days and picked up some cool stuff, including this swage block. And if you want to be keeping up with this stuff a little bit more regularly, make sure you follow me on Instagram, um, because that's where kind of the quick updates come from and a lot of the, the photos and stuff. This swage block is probably in the 250 to 300 pound range. It's quite large um, and it is in immaculate condition. I think that's the word I should use to describe it. You can see that it looks like it came right out of the mold. All right, if you look at it from here, you can see that there is no dings, there's no chips taken out, there's no deformation of any kind. Uh, it looks like it's, there's something's been spray painted on it before, so it's kind of, that's what the, all the weird stuff is, but I mean, it's it's quite amazing actually, and the underside looks, looks just like this, so. I also got this vise here. This is a beautiful uh, leg vise forged wrought iron leg vise. It's kind of a medium sized bugger, real nice. Over here is kind of the prime jewel of the trip. Um, this is a Hawkeye power hammer. You can see it has a wooden frame on it, which is very, very unique. Um, I know it looks kind of dark under the veranda in the front of the shop here, but it's a Helve hammer. I think it's rated at about a 25 pound head or so, maybe it's 30 pound. Um, runs off an eccentric, kind of same kind of a spring system you'd see on a little giant with the cross head and the toggle arms and such. And the clutch is flat belt, it's meant to run off a line shaft, so the belt's meant to run up to line shaft somewhere up there. And then when you step on the treadle, it tightens that idler pulley and it'll make the hammer run. It'll increase friction and, and turn the pulley faster. Um, it's in operating condition. I can turn it over. I am yet to hook it up to anything. Uh, or I'm yet to hook it up to a power source. Um, the wood is in very good condition for its age, which is nice. Everything's free, works well. And uh, I'm not quite sure what to do with it yet. It's a cute little power hammer and it's a rare one. Um, we'll find a use for it though, no doubt. So in hammer making news, I just received these stamps today. Oop, and I just built them off the anvil, but these are the stamps that are going on each individual hammer. And you can see that they have Alex Steele's S-Touch mark. And on one side, they're gonna say steel, Alex last name, and then the weight of the hammer. This one says 4.5, so this will go on the 4.5 pounders. I hope it'll focus a little better. And then this is the one that's going on the other side of the hammers, and it says S for Alex Steel touch mark, and then it says my last name, Hardy, and then it has my touch mark underneath the JR. I'm sorry that's not focusing. You kind of see it there. Maybe I'll zoom up on that, I don't know, but that's a, that's a deal. And these are made by Buckeye Engraving, and they are awesome stamps. I punched the first two and a half pound billet yesterday, or no, not yesterday, before I left for the trip, which was a couple days ago. And there it is, looks very special. Um, and then I also made new press tooling. Uh, so these are new plates and these are my new stripper bars and then when I punched that billet I accidentally ran the punch into the bottom plate and it caused it to mushroom so I need to regrind that sorry it's out of focus but that works that setup works very good and it's a lot stronger and sturdier I made new thicker pins to hold the die in place um, all that good stuff so that, that that's working much better for me
Okay, so I just finished up forging the second heat after forging the billet, or the first heat after forging the billet, second heat total, uh, forging the two and a half pounders. I think there's like 18 here maybe, something like that. Um, so that gives me a little bit of extra leeway in case some of them don't turn out all right. Um, so I'm really happy with them. I'm using, instead of the spring fullers now, because they completely busted, I'm using um, some attached fullers and reground them and, and they're working pretty good and I'm, as you can see I'm getting some pretty darn clean results so I'm happy with that. Um, we might switch over and make another set of spring fullers to finish, I'm not sure yet. Next up on the agenda is to take these four and a half pound billets and sit at the anvil for a little while. Something that you probably haven't seen me do yet but it's really important. Oopsies, this camera thing is hard. Oh my gosh, I'm not very good at this. Whew. There we go. And mark all those billets out with a center punch and then we'll punch them and probably do the same heat um, that we just did with all the two and a half pounders on the four and a half pounders. So let's try and get something done. All right, everyone missed out again because I did all of these hammer billets on an Instagram live stream. It's not very many of them, but you guys have to follow me there because that's where all the magic happens. Okay, here's some three and a half pounders that we are about to put the touch marks on. My brother is here. Hi. He's helping me out. He's gonna, we're gonna figure out something. Um, and so we're using the new swage block probably. And over one of the holes we'll have the hump tools and we'll just insert the drift as to not collapse the eye. And then we'll use the um, big fuller in this one inch hole and we will use that as kind of our anvil on the underside when we put the touch mark in. So hopefully this works well and I'll give you lots of updates obviously. Okay, so this is the setup that I have for stamping these hammers. So I'm heating them up in the forge, bringing them here, putting them on the hump tools on the swage block, just inserting the drift, coming over to this large fuller that's in the one inch square hole. And then I have the steel touch mark in one tong and the JR touch mark in or the, you know, they both say, they both have the S on them, but um, putting one in one side, one the other. Austin's striking with the 12 pound beast sledge from Brent Bailey. And here is an example of what they look like. So we've got a few done. I will zoom up so you can see a little bit better. You can see what they look like. They look even better once you wire brush all the scale off, but uh, that'll come after heat treat because the heat treating kind of pops the scale off when we quench. So we have all of those three and a half pounders yet to do, but right now I'm gonna start on punching and forging the troughs in the four and a half pounders. So let's light the forge. I wanted to take this time to answer a viewer's question from another video, which is why do you punch the holes and not drill them? There's two answers. One of them is that it's faster as long as you're not waiting for a piece of steel to heat up because you have them in the fire constantly. The whole process takes about 30 seconds, which is not bad at all compared to drilling. The other most important reason is that it preserves the material. You don't lose anything and it spreads it out to the side. And we need that because we need that material there to spread the cheeks. Whereas if you drill, you remove a lot of the material there and then you just don't have as much and it's harder to get the proportions and the aesthetics that you're looking for. Righty ho, we are at take number three because the first time I didn't press record and the second time I forgot to turn the microphone on. So let's make this clear and concise. What happened today? Oh, I'm not mad, I'm just, it's just one of them things. Anyway, um, we did, we troughed and punched all of the two and a half pounders, which is great. We got through most of the four and a half pounders troughed and punched and then my stripper bars broke on my press. And so I need to re-weld them, fix them up. Uh, I'll have to do that tomorrow. I was able to get the hammer that was stuck on the punch off and so I saved the punch and the hammer, which is good. 
Um, we also stamped 18 of the three and a half pounders and my brother cut up some more three and a half pound billets because I have to make some more to make up for the ones that are in the junk pile. Towards the end of this series, I will show the junk pile and what makes hammers go in the junk pile. I also cut up, not today, but a little while ago, I cut up all of the handle material that is gonna be necessary, I think, and so that's all ready to go. I can, I'll show that another time. And uh, that's, uh, that's what got done in the shop today, and it, it wasn't too bad. Uh, right now it's storming and, and raining, and uh, it's getting a little bit later in the evening, so I'm gonna go in and, and uh, do all the things you do when you go in in the evening. So, y'all have a, a great day, and I'll see you on the next video.